feel like it's come up a lot recently, mostly because of the pending strikes by junior doctors in England, but also because we've had a spate of public health disasters one after another. When you have a series of public health disasters, this causes debate and people debate whether the actions that doctors and healthcare workers at large are taking are appropriate and in the best interests of patients. That means that there is always a group of people, large or small, that inevitably doesn't like whatever action is taken. And then we come back to the topic of, well, what about your medical oath? Haven't you forgotten your Hippocratic oath? What about do no harm? You should all, you should all be struck off, fired, or some other series of horrible outcomes. And the arguments aside, this is actually a really interesting question, or rather perhaps a few really interesting questions taken together. What actually is an oath? What does it mean? And more to the point, do doctors still take an oath? Do they take the Hippocratic Oath? Well, my name is Ollie. I'm a junior doctor living and working in England as part of the NHS, and we're gonna go through that today. Apologies for the slightly different looking and sounding recording environment. I'm currently sat in an apartment in Italy attending a conference, but content still needs to be made and to reach you guys. So let's start with what do we actually mean by an oath? An oath is essentially a promise or a statement, a declaration that someone makes to uphold a series of principles or actions that they might take or not take. And historically oaths had really significant political, religious or moral value and were used to bind large groups of people together. But thinking very specifically about medicine, what is the Hippocratic Oath? It's the one that's most often referenced in films and TV programs and in the media, generally thought to have been written somewhere around 500 to 300 BC. Hippocrates, of course, being one of the famous ancient Greek philosophers. Although more specifically now, it is thought that Hippocrates himself probably had very little to do with writing the oath. It might have been written by his disciples, other people that came after him, and then had his name appended to it later on in history. Now, the original Hippocratic Oath, which I will put on screen for you now, essentially asks the reader or the declarer to swear on a number of different healing gods, including Apollo the Healer, Asclepius, the wielder of the famous Rod of Asclepius, the international symbol of medicine, and Panacea. And what you'll notice if you look quite carefully is that it actually forbids some very specific act, including not taking a knife to another man and not giving a pessary to perform an abortion, both of which obviously form a vital part of healthcare in the modern world in the form of surgery and proper reproductive care. And indeed, it speaks against giving a poison of any kind, which really is something to think about as many of the treatments that we give and medicines we give today are poisons, they are toxin. Botox or botulinum toxin A is just one example. It is pretty obviously uh, very poisonous to humans, but something that we give regularly as part of common medical treatments for various conditions. And you will also notice the curious absence of the line, first do no harm, which is often quoted erroneously as being part of the Hippocratic Oath. As far as we know, it was never included in the original oath and seems to have appeared at some point around the 17th century. And of course, essentially what's happened over time, as with very, very many old things, is that old things get replaced revised and adjusted into more modern variants that allow more flexibility and more compatibility with the modern practice of medicine. And speaking of modern and flexible things, it's time to tell you about today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning platform that provides a huge amount of knowledge in a very accessible form right at your fingertips. Accessible in a way that works for you. We all love to learn. If you didn't, you wouldn't be here, of course. And the key thing that Brilliant does really well is that it promotes learning by doing. It's not simply reading massive textbooks in maths and science, it works by hands-on problem solving. It's super easy to get into, presents the next steps in a logical and structured way, and makes your goals much more achievable. Take things one step at a time through Brilliant's library of interactive challenges and become more brilliant today. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash ollieburton. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So thanks so much Brilliant for being brilliant by sponsoring my channel and this video. Some of the more modern codes of conduct that you'll see today include the American Medical Association's Code of Medical Ethics and the one that we'll all be familiar with in the UK, 
Good Medical Practice, written by the GMC, the General Medical Council, which outlines the professional role and responsibilities of a doctor. In terms of oaths and declarations specifically, however, the one that bears most relevance is one called the Declaration of Geneva. First written up in 1948 by the World Medical Association, the WMA, after the atrocities that happened during World War II. This is the declaration that I myself took in 2021 on the day when I became a doctor, and indeed the one that my partner led her graduating cohort in when they became doctors a year later. Today, most medical schools around the world, the vast majority in fact, still do use one oath or another, mostly for traditional and historic reasons. Which particular oath each medical school chooses to use is really a matter of preference for them and has little practical bearing on anything that those doctors will go on and do. In the UK, the one we've already talked about, the Declaration of Geneva, is the one that's most commonly used. In America, the last survey being done in 2018, all medical schools do use one oath or another, but none of them use the original version of the Hippocratic Oath, and all of the osteopathic medical schools take the osteopathic oath. The reality is, however, that breaking the terms of any of these particular oaths that students might take on graduating is unlikely to carry any penalty by itself. We must remember, however, and I've already alluded to this, that all practicing doctors virtually everywhere in the world are bound by codes of professional practice, the standards to which doctors practicing in those countries and societies are bound, not to mention the various laws that exist in those countries to protect patients from medical negligence and malpractice. And between those professional codes of conduct and those laws to protect patients, there's obviously going to be very significant overlap with what is written in the oath. And those codes of conduct and the law are not necessarily the same, and this is again probably a topic for another video, but in the UK, for example, there is no duty to help someone in an emergency under the law. However, the GMC instructs that doctors, if able to, actually do have a professional duty to help a stranger in a medical emergency. And failing to do so, if it were found out, is actually a failure in your professional code of practice and could trigger a formal review of your fitness to practice by the GMC. So to summarize everything from today, do doctors still take an oath? Most commonly, yes they do. Is it the Hippocratic Oath? Almost certainly not. Does breaking the terms of the oath that you have taken matter? Practically speaking, it probably does, although that is much more to do with your professional codes of practice and the law of the country in which you practice, rather than anything specifically to do with the oath that you may or may not have taken. So thanks very much for watching guys. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe. Don't forget to go and check out my website, hollyburton.com. Take care and I'll see you later.